It's happening. The NBA is telling players from around the world to go to Disney World, which I thought was a football thing. I'm going to Disney World. I'm going to Disney World. Or a Lopez Brothers thing. Basketball, Halloween, Brothers, the, Lo Disney. the Lopez Cinematic Universe. Oh my goodness. Well, they should all settle down because nothing is official, but several reports from ESPN, The Athletic, all say that the NBA should give instructions to return around June 1st and Disney World is the Giannis for MVP level favorite here to host the NBA. Even though Giannis can't fit in the ride. <sighs> Disney makes sense, yes, but once they do lock down these players, what if someone sneaks off? There's about 450 players when someone breaks the rules, because it's gonna happen. What should the punishment be? A month long suspension? A full year suspension? This is serious stuff. The NBA will make sure no one wants to risk the whole thing by being unsafe. In this video, we'll break down why Disney World makes the most sense. I'm gonna ask you a really fun question to put in the comments and I wanna hear these answers and what the NBA will look like when it comes back. Hey guys, it's Casey Kiernan, AKA Tyler Hero's brother, according to Masta Gangster. And I disagree, but apparently some people think that he's right. Hit subscribe and hit notification bells because it really helps out the channel. Well, we're waiting for the NBA to come back and it will be Disney World, I am telling you. The first thing I want to get into though is how the NBA will punish someone for leaving Disney World against the rules because I think it would have big ramifications. So again, there's like 450 players. Let's say someone wants to go into Orlando for, you know, a slice of pizza. In the past, you would have said, oh, okay, yeah, Ron Artest would do that. Maybe Lance Stevenson. I could see J.R. Smith sneaking off. <laughs> In our 2020 example, I'm going with Dion Waiters, who's on the Lakers now. So let's say Dion sneaks off for that pizza. I think the punishment should be a half season suspension. I know that sounds crazy, but the whole way this thing works is if everyone's completely safe, no one leaves, no one comes back in. If they have some crazy outbreak, the whole experiment blows up and it's a big waste of everyone's time and money. They have to take this really, really seriously. The entire 2020 NBA season is at risk here. The NBA is already losing a ton of money and they can't afford for somebody to go rogue. So if Dion Waiters or anyone breaks the rules, they are shut down for the rest of this season and at least half of next year. Jared Dudley thinks it's gonna happen too. Recently he said, quote, when you're dealing with 300 different players, if you've seen the Jordan documentary, every team's got a Rodman. He just doesn't have green or blue hair. There's always someone who's outside the box who does that, takes the risk and says, hey, listen, man, I'm healthy and I feel good. Jared Dudley thinks players will be able to leave, but I think he's wrong. With the Disney World idea in place, it's a giant campus. You can leave your hotel room, but not the campus. And I wanna know in the comments, who do you think is the guy who's most likely to break the rules? I say Dion Waiters, but I want some other answers here. Jared Dudley apparently says there's one guy on every team. Tell me who you think that guy is. Of course, the NBPA would never go for this. The woman who represents the players, Michelle Roberts said, quote, are we gonna have armed guards around the hotel? That sounds like incarceration to me. Whoa, okay. That doesn't sound like someone who's down with a strict anything when it comes to this bubble situation. But if I ran the NBA, I would be tough on this and make a big punishment for anyone who breaks the rules and risks the entire league. This is part of the reason why Disney World is a much better location than Las Vegas. Those are the two front runners, but playing out the season in Vegas? Yeah, Vegas! No, 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 no. That is a horrible idea. Do you know how many 19 to 30 year old millionaires would be sneaking out in Vegas? Vegas, baby, Vegas! This guy, Keith Smith, has been dropping a lot of knowledge on the NBA at Disney World. Crazy, he worked at Disney for 20 years and now he covers the NBA. Like, he's the world expert on this. He's outlined why Disney is the perfect host 
for the NBA, and I agree. First, we have to say goodbye to the other candidates. Vegas, no. Houston, no. Louisville, no. The Bahamas, no. Cruise ships and an island, hell no. Disney World is obviously the best spot, and it's not even close. First of all, it is a giant piece of private property, which means they can shut down the whole thing in a second if they have to. They control what goes in and what goes out, unlike all those other places. Disney World has 20,000 hotel rooms. And if NBA players bring their families, obviously there's a lot to do. Even if theme parks are closed, there's golf and pools, whatever. They've got lots of dining and staff ready to execute living there for two months or more. Their own security staff too. As Keith points out, Disney World is big. So big that it's twice the size of Manhattan about the size of San Francisco. That is 39 square miles. If you've gotta be stuck somewhere for two months, this is perfect. Now in terms of basketball, the NBA will play their games at the ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex. It's a giant space with every type of field and court imaginable, but there are three different arenas that could host NBA games, and they're all broadcast ready. So putting games on TV is built in. Wide World of Sports has been a destination for AAU and college basketball tournaments since the mid 2000s. The two main arenas that we're gonna see NBA playoff games in are HP Court and The Arena. I expect the HP Court to host the biggest games. Then there's the relationship already between the NBA, ESPN, and Disney. The NBA just opened up the NBA experience at Disney World. ESPN is one of the national broadcast partners for the NBA, and they are owned by Disney. The rest of the NBA season will be played out, and Disney World is obviously gonna be the host. So the NBA wants to get back some of the money that they've lost because of the pandemic and having to suspend the season. And here's how they're gonna do it. They wanna actually play out some of the regular season and then have a full playoffs. And I know that seems crazy. Call in all 30 teams during a pandemic, some of them to play meaningless games, maybe like five to six games when they should probably be home safe with their families. But here's the deal, it's all about money. NBA teams fulfill their local TV deals if they play 70 of the 82 games. Every team has played about 63 plus games. So that means that all the teams with nothing to play for are gonna have to fly into Disney, get into shape, play a training camp, then like five meaningless games. Now I've heard some people say, how are they gonna convince the players and the teams to do that? And to me, that is ridiculous. I can't believe some teams and players would have to be begged to come do their job, which they get paid millions of dollars for, especially when it would be in the best interest of the entire league as a whole. I can't believe some players and teams would put up a fight over this. Just go to work. Once they have a three to four week training camp and a handful of regular season games, the NBA playoffs would start. Now there have been ideas thrown around about shortened series, maybe a tournament to play into the playoffs. But Adam Silver says that no matter what happens, he wants seven game series throughout. Again, this is all about making up lost money. And I think they'll play four games a day and televise the playoffs from morning until night. It'll be awesome. It'll be like the beginning of March Madness where there's games all day long, only with the NBA. And if they do this, it'll reduce the risk because the playoffs will be shortened so the players will have to be around each other for less time. There's no travel too, so it's less strain on the players. The last piece of all this is what the NBA will do if a player tests positive. Now the NBA will only come back if they can have someone test positive and not shut down the entire league again. That would be a disaster and a waste of everyone's time. So if someone does test positive, I think the team will have to treat it like any injury and go on without it. That could be up to three plus weeks without a player. If a superstar is the guy who gets the virus, would we consider it an asterisk title if they get beat? Like if Kawhi Leonard or LeBron James or Giannis Antetokounmpo contracts it somewhere near the end of the playoffs, they'd be out. I would have a hard time feeling like the team that beat them is a legitimate champion. Now I expect this to all be announced somewhere around the beginning of June. Commissioner Adam Silver told the players and the owners 
They don't actually have to make a decision till the middle of June, but I think things are moving really quickly, so it'll be announced sooner. There are so many reasons why Disney World is the obvious choice here. I cannot wait to see it play out. Support AM Hoops and click subscribe. Don't miss a daily NBA video.